What's up guys? Nathan just yelled at me from the tunnel, said hurry up and get your camera and come to the garden. You're not going to want to miss this. So, I have no idea what he's about to show us, but let's go find out. I am slightly scared <laughs> of what he's about to show us. Am I going to be scared? No. We have life on the farm. We have life on the farm? Oh gosh. I don't want to scare him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> did she have babies? She did and they can't be more than a couple days old. Oh my word. So she flew over to the garden. She flew over in the garden. And you thought she was missing because you told me we were missing a chicken. We right? were missing a chicken. We weren't getting as many eggs. Now we know How why. Funny. Nature is neat. I haven't gotten close enough to see how many there's quite a few. Hi mama. So she came from uh Murray McMurray. She's one of our Murray McMurray hens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is what I'm counting right now. Yeah, so Nathan made a really good point. It is supposed to be uh, 40 tonight. It's low 40, so we're putting the walls down on the tunnel. She is very broody. <laughs> um, but we're going to have to catch them and hook up, or I guess, put, well, what we can do is put Mama in that one brooder. Well, she, those are big enough to go. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. We'll try to catch them, put them in the one half with Mama, because she'll keep them. It's so weird, we've never had chicks hatch. Um, so I'm over here like, well, we need the heat lamp, we need the brooder plates, but we have the mama. Um, how? Exciting. It is so exciting. Now we just, we keep, I was hoping that it was like, maybe some like duck eggs that had gotten left and maybe some little ducks were hatching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. You scared me. Okay, let's try to get close, but also be respectful. But, I mean, we're going to have to get close regardless because mm -hmm. we got to catch these catch things. Them. Oh, my goodness. I may, I may catch Mama and put her in there first. Good luck. Well, she may stick around and protect the little <laughs> girl. Maybe yeah. I'll grab her legs. Yeah, let's see. This grass is so tall. We've had so much rain. We haven't been able to weed eat in here. So it's hard to kind of even see them through the grass. <laughs> Hi, Mama. What you doing, girl? They are beautiful. We have that really pretty rooster too, so. Yeah, I think they're gonna be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm counting seven right now unless there's some hiding somewhere else. Alright. Well, let me do the thing and I got something to do and I'll be back. Okay. My goodness, y'all are sweet. I mean, how exciting is that? <laughs> I love it. So Nathan's plan today is actually to move the billies. So our, um, our, they're not ours. So Ben turns billy goats are in our back pasture where the pigs were. And we had had our pigs in the small area where they had uh, their boar. But there's actually not a gate to that small little uh, area where they had Gerard. So we're having to feed them over the fence and the pails that we're putting in there, they're like kicking up and putting in their water puddle. And so it's really just hard for us to get in there and feed them and do what we need to do. So the plan is to move the billies um, up to the back pasture where I think they had their breeding males before. Um, and that way we can get in there and easily feed the pigs in a designated area. We're not throwing feed on the ground. It's just, then they're gonna also have uh, those little houses to go into as well, the farrowing houses, which will be nice, you know, just for them to have some sort of added shelter. So that's Nathan's plan today. I have been in the tunnel cultivating beds, um, spraying. I'm actually gonna take you guys down there and show you because We've been getting asked some questions and I want to talk through that. Um, I know that we showed you guys putting on the insect netting. We tell you that we spray stuff, but I want to show you exactly what that is and talk through a question that I have been getting asked quite a bit. Also, I just love like impromptu uh, vlog days. <laughs> It's Saturday here. I've got sourdough going in the house. Nathan cooked breakfast for everybody and now we're just doing some farm chores and I am happy to be able to take you guys along. Alrighty. 
So as you guys can see, I've got the netting off because I had to do quite a bit of weeding. I use this uh, stirrup hoe, which is amazing. I will link it down below. This is probably one of my most used tools on the farm. It's amazing. Um, get yourself one if you're having to weed beds. But I took them off to be able to weed. I still have to weed the flowers on this side, but all the main four vegetable beds are done. So some of the questions we have been seeing on our videos is, you told me to buy this insect netting, I bought it, and I still have caterpillars. And my plants are still showing signs of damage. It didn't work. And I just wanna to touch on that because I can show you in here, which I will, <laughs> I have plants that have been completely eaten down to the very center, um, and I, I don't know that they're gonna bounce back. And I've had my insect netting on here for, what, two weeks now? More than that, probably. And why is that? Why is that, right? The insect netting is supposed to prevent it. The deal that I ran into, which is more than likely if you are experiencing this, the same situation you are in, when I bought my plant starts, I bought them from uh, the farmer's co-op local to me, and I bought some at a plant nursery nearby. Um, and all the ones that I bought from the plant nursery are great because when I bought them, there was no existing eggs on them. <laughs> so when I brought them home, they didn't, caterpillars weren't being born because there were no eggs on them. But the plant starts that I got from the farmer's co-op, they had eggs on them when I bought the starts. So therefore, when I put them in the ground and I put my diapel dust on them and I put my insect netting on there, there were still established eggs on the plants. And so those kept producing caterpillars. And so if you are noticing that, if you are, you know, you've got your insect netting up and you're still seeing damage, it's because there's still eggs on there that you're going to have to kill. So what I did today is I removed my insect netting, I weeded all my beds, I went in and I sprayed this. Let me grab it. It actually hooks up to your water hose um, and you're able to spray your plants with water first and then go back through and spray it. I will... Uh, it's a little dirty. <laughs> I will link it below, but it is BT is what it is. So your water hose hooks up to it. There's an off switch, a water switch, and an on switch. And you can actually spray this through your insect netting. You don't have to take your insect netting off at all. I did because I was having to weed my beds anyways. So I will still probably have to, I sprayed everything good. I'm gonna immediately put my insect netting back on and then I will probably periodically have to come back out here and still spray, but this should get rid of the existing eggs that are there. So they're not just continuously hatching. I'm still not having the issues because the goal is to get rid of the eggs so that they don't keep hatching and keep reproducing. And so if you are dealing with that issue, stay hopeful because more than likely you just have to get rid of that initial batch of eggs and then you're gonna be good. I'm actually really pleased with my plants. I am dealing with some damage. Some uh, are more damaged than the others, but that's okay because whatever space I'm having to rip up a plant because maybe it's just too demolished, it's not gonna bounce back. I can go back in and put leafy greens in that. I can direct seed something. So I'm not so much worried about the space because you can easily go back in and just direct seed something now it's not gonna be a brassica so that is that you know brassicas take quite a bit longer but if you have empty space just go back in and sow radishes or maybe some you know spinach or arugula things that do well in the cooler uh, temperatures and that's really just what I recommend tonight we're gonna drop the sides down to protect uh, mainly the flowers that are in here and the ginger the ginger will be coming out next week uh, but we need it to not die before that <laughs> and so we are gonna be dropping the sides down probably this this afternoon around four or five o'clock to try to trap all the heat in here that way it'll carry through to the night but I'm feeling really good about what the tunnel looks like so I'm gonna show you guys real quick check out my Brussels sprouts so these are the ones that I got from a local nursery and they look great as you guys can see there's not really any damage on these so that's what is here back is Brussels sprouts and then here back is Brussels sprouts you guys can see here all these weeds so I take that uh, stirrup hoe and it just gets down underneath it but then I don't go through and pick this off it'll just um, you know decompose over time but it does cut it down deep at the root but then I just let it lay it'll decompose add back to the soil my cabbages are getting really big look at all these super pleased I was gonna show you guys one of my plants though that just looks really bad 
So this was the one I was talking about. I'm not, I don't know if it's gonna bounce back. Probably not, but I'm gonna leave it in here just in case. And then if it doesn't, what I'll do is just I'll come back and I've got this whole space just to direct seed with something. But I am hoping you guys can see there's all that caterpillar poop. I mean, I sprayed these and just soaked them really, really well. So I'm hoping that that BT will help quite a bit. My dino kale looks really good. I mean, there are some plants that took a beating more so than others, but I think that they'll bounce back. The plan is with this is just to make kale chips. The kids love kale chips. It's a nice little healthy snack, especially in the winter. My rainbow chard is looking so pretty. Look how big it's getting. These colors are so pretty. I actually took some photos out in the garden the other morning. So the tunnel is coming along really, really nicely. I'm super pleased. We cut the last round of sunflowers for the season uh, this week, which was kind of bittersweet. I'm so used to looking out my kitchen window and seeing all these beautiful sunflowers and knowing that like we cut our last round and I won't see any more sunflowers till next year is kind of sad. But that's how it is on a farm, right? You have these seasons where everything's in bloom and it's beautiful and your vegetables, like your tomatoes are just going wild. And then, you know, when you rip out those plants from the summer, you're like, man, I really need to like appreciate this thing because I'm not gonna get it again for a few months. And so that's kind of how I was feeling about the sunflowers. So my plan where we had the sunflowers, that is where I'm going to be putting all of my shallots and my garlic. I'm actually gonna be doing a video with my sister this week. Uh, which will be really special and really fun. I cannot wait to show you guys. And we're going to talk all about garlic, all about shallots, um, what we're doing, why we chose the varieties we chose. So make sure you stick around for that. I'm going to go find Nathan and see where he is and hopefully give you guys a better look of these really cute little babies. Nathan is so excited about these little chicks. Oh, he's feeding. Let's go see what he's doing. You feeding everybody? Huh? You feeding everybody? Yeah. Did you get the boys moved? I did. Alright, come talk to me about these chicks because you're so excited. I think it's so cute. Well, we hadn't had life on the new life on the farm in a long time. Uh, missed my rapids. <laughs> but I was walking to shut the gates before I moved the uh, the billies and I heard this little tweet tweet noise and I was like what in the world is that and uh, anyways I followed the followed the noise and found mama and the baby so anyways you're excited I'm excited can you tell yes <laughs> this Hopefully is Nathan's it's excited face all pullets <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> all right Nathan we decided to come in it was really really dark down there um he is just over the moon I think it is just the sweetest thing it's so it's not funny i just love seeing him come to life when it comes to the animals so nathan was saying he hopes that they're all pullets and that is something too like the girls and i that rooster is that's my coffee <laughs> does it taste weird because I, I brought it in because i think i might have gotten some of that spray in there <laughs> i mean if it's okay to eat on the plants probably okay in the coffee but <laughs> it's just cold to me <laughs> um so we are hoping that they are all pullets because we don't really know what we are going to do with the rooster right now. Yeah, we do. Stew. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This is the first weekend we haven't had something going on. And so it's either going to happen tomorrow or if I get finished with my chores today, we'll just make broth. Broth. Mm. So that is what we do. We try not to get roosters, right? Like we were supposed to have gotten all pullets with that batch and we ended up getting a rooster, which is okay. We have just, we don't, one, we're not typically like, like hatching out our own eggs, which would be one reason why we would keep a rooster. Um, we have our great Pyrenees in there with our birds. So he protects the birds from anything, which is another reason that you would keep a rooster is they protect the flock. Um, our dogs do a really good job with that. And at some point, usually a rooster in our experience always turns mean. And that is what happened. So I got attacked by the rooster um, when our friend Kenzie farm set, she got attacked several times by the rooster 
to where we just don't feel comfortable with the kids going in there by themselves. Um, and so that's just what we're gonna do. And that, that, is, broth. that is what we do, really. They don't taste good, they're not tender, they're very tough, rubbery. Um, most of the time in our experience, that is an older rooster too, so as they get older, their meat becomes tougher. I was about to say, I don't think that one came from Murray McMurray. Oh, you don't? No, because those are the ones that we got from Jessica. Um, you remember? Because we had four roosters. We've already... Jessica Sowards? Yes. She sent those to me from Murray May Murray. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, she had them shipped to me. Sorry, didn't know. <laughs> Jessica went up to Murray McMurray a couple years ago and sent me a little happy mail, a little box of baby chicks. Um, so yeah, all the birds we have are from Murray. I got you. Yeah, but that is what we're gonna do. Um, that's just what we do. It is something that we're not gonna put our kids in that position to go in there and get attacked by a rooster all the time. We don't need the rooster as far as protection for our flock. Um, and now, you know, he did serve a really good purpose for a long time now we have seven new baby chicks because of him but he will end up in the crock pot and then we'll have to sex the new little babies and we'll try to get rid of them it's hard to get rid of just one rooster though we'll we'll wait till they get big enough and then yeah. do the same thing yeah. with them so yeah meanwhile check out that sourdough whoa what right? are you making so we have we have a church event tomorrow night and it is soup theme um, and so I am making a couple loaves of sourdough bread to go because I thought that would be really good with soup. So it came to me at 6 o'clock this morning. So that's what I'm going to do. Nathan's about to get on mowing and weed eating. And then we're going to try to catch... Story of my life right here. <laughs> Constant weed eating. I know. The plan is for the garden though, for him to mow it down really, really good. We eat it down really, really good. We've been saving all of the cardboard from the move and I'm gonna try and lay that down until I can get a hold of some wood chips. That is just, those of you who have access to wood chips, be thankful because we have the hardest time getting access to wood chips, which in my opinion is the most affordable thing we can do right now if we were to rock the garden that would cost thousands of dollars um and so we have been on all these different lists we've asked so many people it truly is just a waiting game but that's the plan we've been saving the cardboard hopefully we won't have to have you weedy forever um, so we're trying to put systems in place that make more sense and are more efficient mm -hmm. And you spending all day weed eating is a chore that we could alleviate if we had these other things in place. So that's our little impromptu uh, Saturday vlog that we weren't expecting to do, but it turned out really nice. And hopefully in the next vlog, we will have caught the chicks, have them in a safe place with mama, and I'll get you guys a better uh, video of them. They looked really cute. Yeah, they were. They look super, super cute. What do cute. you think? I don't think they're more than a couple days old. Oh, no. I mean, they're, they're little bitty toots. Um, well, they look about the size when we got our chicks in from McMurray, and they shipped, what, two days old? Yeah, a day or two. A day or so. two. So they're probably just a couple days old. She's She hid them really well. Um, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Stay tuned, and we'll keep you up to date about the new life on yep. the farm. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.